What's good YouTube, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I'm so excited to bring you a brand new format of videos we're calling Motor of the Week. First off, I'd like to welcome you to my basement. Forgive me for the lame background, but basically what we're going to do is for every single week from my house, I'm going to be cutting a single video that's going to go over in complete detail a Ford specific engine of your choice. The first video we're going to be going over is on the F-150. We've had a lot of people ask us uh, about the new engines that are out there, the EcoBoost versus the non-EcoBoost, and what do you prefer, what do you recommend, and so this is a response to those comments you've left in the video. So with that being said, let us know what you want to see next. Today's video is going to be on the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost engine on the F-150. The F-150 comes with four different available engines in the 2015 and the 2016 F-150. First off is the 3.5 V6, it's not an EcoBoost engine. Next is the 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost engine that is optional in a lot of the vehicles and standard in the Lariat. Next up is the 5.0 V8. Lastly is the biggest of the engine, even though it's not the biggest. That's the 3.5 V6 EcoBoost. We're going to get into those engines a little bit. With that being said, let's jump right into the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. Before we start this video, I do have to tell you I'm a little bit biased towards this engine. And the reason for that is because that's actually what I chose to drive in my everyday vehicle, which is a 2015 F-150. This engine is rated for 325 horsepower and 375 pound-feet of torque and it absolutely feels strong when you're driving the engine. And partly because this is a 2.7, it doesn't weigh a whole lot compared to a bigger V8 motor. This engine is rated up to 22 miles per gallon in the city and we actually just got through visiting Gatlinburg, Tennessee, uh, driving all the way from Bessemer, Alabama, and we were able to get Mind you, in an FX4 four-wheel drive, able to get 20 miles a gallon on the interstate doing 70, 75 miles an hour. Keep in mind these fuel economy ratings are in a test lab, on a dynamometer, in perfect conditions to get a real-world comparison of how this engine does versus this engine in fuel economy. Most of the fuel economy standards that you see on the window sticker are not even realistic, but I'll tell you this engine really performs in the fuel economy and the power end. One feature of the 2015 F-150 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine that I, it took a little bit of while to get used to was the auto start stop. It's a really nice feature. Basically what it does is to save fuel, the vehicle when you come to a complete stop, the vehicle automatically shuts the engine off and then cranks it right back up as soon as you pull your foot off the brake pedal. It's a great idea in theory because it obviously saves gas while you're sitting at a stop and go traffic situation. But if you are running any kind of accessories or an air conditioner and you live in a hot area like Alabama, well then you run into a situation where the air conditioner will slow down a little bit. Now there is a nice little button located right above your screen that you can deactivate the auto start stop button. But once again, you have to hit that button every single time you come into the vehicle. So I, the only gripe I have on that is that I wish Ford would allow us to completely turn it off forever, keep, keep it turned on forever, or be able to choose in between. Right now, every time you start the vehicle, that feature's turned on. As we mentioned a little bit earlier, this V6 is an EcoBoost engine. What that means, that's Ford's marketing logo for a twin-turbo direct-injected engine. One of the reasons this engine is so strong is that the block is actually made out of compacted graphite iron, the same kind of material that's found in the 6.7 liter diesel Power Stroke engine. All right, now let's talk a little more advanced features on this new engine that you won't hopefully find anywhere else. This engine features aluminum cylinder heads with water-cooled exhaust manifolds. Let's talk about that and why is that important to you. In the years past, a turboed vehicle, after 40, 50, 60,000 miles, the turbos would end up going out. And the reason for that is because you'd get in the car, drive it hard. When you cut it off, the turbos would cool down too quickly. And that constant heat up and cool down would cause the turbos to go out prematurely. Now with this water-cooled system, even after you cut the vehicle off, that water-cooled system continues to slowly cool down those turbos even after you've cut the vehicle off. What does that mean for you? More longevity out of the engine. Before we go much further into these details on this engine, I want to make sure that you realize that I'm going to include a link that's going to have all of these details written out in typed form. And all you have to do is click on the link down in the description and it'll take you straight to that. No strings attached. Basically, it'll just download straight for you. Make sure to take a look at that link. 
Another great feature on this engine that's included on almost every one of Ford's engines is called TIVCT. It stands for Twin Independent Variable Cam Timing, and it's exactly what it sounds like. There's twin independent cams, and they can vary depending on exactly what you're doing. What does that mean? Well, no matter whether you're just trying to cruise and get fuel economy or whether you're stepping on it to pull that load up the hill, the cams will automatically adjust to provide the perfect ratio of fuel economy and power when you need it. We had talked a little bit about the turbos a little bit earlier, and that's a main key point of this 2.7 engine. Once again, this is a twin turbo setup that operates up to 12 PSI of pounds per square inch of boost for those people that don't know what PSI stands for. Another nice feature of this new 2.7 is the smart charging alternator. It's exactly what it sounds like. Instead of just a normal alternator just charging the battery whenever the battery needs it, this smart charging alternator chooses the best time for fuel efficiency and for power to make sure that it charges the battery at the perfect time. We had briefly talked about the gasoline direct injection and it's exactly what it sounds like. I want to expand on that a little bit. Basically what happens is the vehicle directly injects the perfect and precise amount of fuel directly into the engine only when you need it. What that means to you is less waste of fuel, which saves you in your pocketbook. Another nice feature of this engine is the aggressive deceleration fuel shutoff. It's exactly what it sounds like. If, let's say, you're aggressively coming to a stop, you don't need any fuel at that point in time. So the engine automatically cuts off the fuel to the engine because of that gasoline direct injection we just talked about, you can do that, but it automatically cuts off the fuel to the engine when you don't need it. Let's talk towing a little bit. This 2.7 is good for 8,500 pounds worth of conventional towing. If you jump through all these hoops, that you get a regular cab and that you get everything is perfect and optimized for the towing capacity that the 2.7 can handle. Now let's talk realistic. Most people are gonna be looking for a two wheel drive or four wheel drive super crew now let's just talk about that four wheel drive super crew with a moderate gear ratio something like a 355 gear ratio you can still tow 7500 pounds that's more than most people myself included will ever tow that's why this is the perfect engine for me once again this is not a sales pitch on the 2.7 ecoboost i could care less on exactly which engine that you pick all i'm doing is laying out the information and telling you what i personally did myself Lastly, let's talk about the price. $795 on an XLT302 package. That's what it costs to bump up to the 2.7. If you wanted to do the 3.5 EcoBoost, you'd be looking at $1995. That's $1,200 difference in the two engines. Will I ever tow the difference? No. It's not really worth it for me personally to go from a 2.7 to a 3.5. But I understand there's a lot of people out there that use their F-150s for towing a lot of things every single day. And that's a decision that you get to make. Me, I bought my F-150 to be a, a family hauler. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found some kind of useful information. And once again, pardon the weird backdrop. But we're just hoping that you were able to find some kind of good information on the new F-150 2.7. Once again, this is all rated on the 2016 engine. However, this information is really widely acceptable on the 2015 model as well. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Town & Country TV. Make sure to do us a huge favor. Comment below. Let us know what in the world do you want us to see next. Which engine do you want to see us do on Motor of the Week? Thanks again for watching Town & Country TV. I'm your host, Mitchell Watts. Do not forget to subscribe and have a great day.